What up, players? It's Warboss Tap in this mood. Today we finish our Death Corps of Krieg infantrymen, except for the transfers and unit designations, which are going to go on his left shoulder. Uh, he is done and ready for battle, including his base, which I show you how to do and what I use for the mud here in the back. Awesome stuff. Besides the colors you're going to that you used in part one of the video, you're also going to be using the following co colors in this video: Gorthor Brown. Mithro, or Runefang Steel, or if you have Mithro Silver, Fenrisian Grey, Mephiston Red, and Pallid Witch Flesh. Oh, I believe you're also using Karak Stone. Everything else I think we're using from, uh, from the first video as touch-ups, like uh, Rust Grey, Lead Belcher, Mornfang Graham, and um, Agrax Earthshade. <coughs> So this video is the first time that I've, you know, I've listened to a lot of people's messages and feedback and comments, and I've decided it's time to do a little bit of a change. And in my tutorials from now on, I'm actually going to stop putting in the music, and I'm going to leave the tutorials just completely blank except for my voice, and that way you, the listener, you, the listener, gets to choose what music you play while you're watching my videos, and I think that that's that's much better than me trying to pretend to be some kind of DJ with all the free music that I use. Um, I'll still use it for some of my shorter videos, update videos, because I've grown to uh, love and um, just really enjoy the sound of those tracks, but overall, for my tutorials from now on, um, I'm going to go in a new direction and have them be uh, completely musicless. So that means if you want to watch these videos and listen to me narrating, then just make sure you have another window open to be listening to whatever death metal or hardcore rap you enjoy listening to while you paint your Warhammer. Boo. Lady Boss says boo. Um, another thing, this video, this whole uh, Death Corps of Krieg painting tutorial is I forgot to mention it in the part one, but this is actually a, an appreciation video to one of my July Painting Challenge 2013 participants, War Tiger, W-O-R-T-I-G-E-R. Fantastic guy who did his own Death Corps of Krieg, and uh, that project was an amazing one to watch. So besides Telebraus, War Chef, War Chef Andy, uh, War Tiger was really, really blowing it up with his Death Corps of Krieg. So thank you so much, War Tiger. Hope this will send some people your way. I will include a link to his channel. <clears throat> I will include a link to his channel in the video description below. And uh, please go over there, tell him you saw this on my channel and that I sent you. And um, he, I think he'll like that a lot. So hope you guys enjoy watching the video and uh, let the painting begin. All right, welcome back. So we're going to continue painting our Death Corps of Krieg trooper here. And the first thing you're going to do after you've let your washes and shades dry off is that you are going to <coughs> repaint the model with rust gray. Now this time you really want to make sure you use something like a wet palette or you thin down your paints just because rust gray as a layer color is quite thick. The first time we paint it, we're painting it right on top of the base color of Dark Reaper, so it's not going to be, um, it's not, it wasn't that important because the shades haven't been put on yet. But now that the shades have dried, it's really important that we don't get too thick of a, of a layer of paint on our, on our model. So, <clears throat> After thinning down your paint with some water on a wet palette, you just go back in and leaving the shades in the recesses as always, we paint up our Kriegsman. Now this is when you can get really creative with some some brush strokes and uh, really define where the patterns are of the of the light falling on your uniform by doing a quick a series of quick 
multiple short brush strokes, you can kind of create the effect of rippling cloth or light reflecting off of a folded sleeve or any number of other cool effects. By having the shade, that brown Agrax earth shade in the recesses and by using a wet palette to increase brush control or the control of your paint flow, we are able to create some very nice effects. Okay, a tricky part is this collar. When you get to the guy's collar, I like to start from the top to define. Sorry about that, I don't know when the video last cut off, but I was just saying overall you should have a pretty easy time of figuring out where the where the paint on the collar should go. Likewise on the Civil War-ish looking front. We're just using the tip of our paintbrush to paint that. And down here. All right, when you get to the creases, the folded over parts of the uniform, there are a couple of different ways that I like to approach this particular area. Oh, wow, that looks pretty bad. Let me just fix this up really quick. That's fine for now. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing I like to do is paint in the top of the flap right there, a single straight line all the way across. Once that's done, I like to paint where the crease is right over the, the uh, right over the knee. So I like to paint the uh, in a straight horizontal line going down this fold, and then like diagonal lines going up towards the brass button. So you can still see the dried up shadows here the shade dried up in the recesses, but also um, it's all kind of blended together. When you get back here, I like to do short brush strokes instead of a couple long sloppy ones, because then you can really show some nice patterning on the back of the great coat. It's almost like feathering your paint, but you're creating a very distinct pattern by doing it this way. So if there's a flat surface area, like the back of the great coat, then we just paint these strokes towards where the shading is. So here we're painting down towards the bottom. And here, this little crease at the bottom, and then right at the bottom there. Here at the front is the easiest place to paint these kinds of patterns because of the diagonal way that the coat is kind of falling down into the right. So I'm just going to be painting a series of quick brush strokes that lead down into the side. Touch up on the sleeve. Again, we're picking and choosing where we want that pattern to lie the most. And
painting around all the shadows. If you feel like you make a mistake that's uh, too hard to fix, then you can just go back with your Agrax Earthshade and clean it up. But that should be what your guy's gonna look like after a couple minutes of highlighting the cloak. <clears throat> next, what you're gonna do is take Fenrisian Gray, which is the next color up, and you're going to mix that onto your wet palette. If you're feeling a little bit cautious, you can mix it into the rust gray that we just used. Or if you're batch painting a whole blob squad of these, like I've been doing over the weekend, you can just go for Yeah, so you can use it straight in one go. So here we are. Let me get my light in a little bit closer. And with this Fenrisian Gray, what you're gonna be doing is painting up very clear areas of highlights on your trooper. So wherever there's a line of shading, you paint a line of highlight right next to it and it draws the eye, creates a good contrast and subsequently makes it look like you planned for it to be there all along, even if you didn't. Like that. So you see how there's this Agrax Earthshade, and then um, I painted some Rust Gray right next to it, and now I'm painting Fenrisian Gray right up against it to create the illusion of light reflecting off of it. Same thing here for the crease. The crease in the flap, we're doing the same thing. We're finding where those shades are and we're going to color right up against them. It almost creates a very, uh, like a graphic novel, uh, almost like a Frank Miller kind of art style or, you know, Sin City. Like, I don't know why I'm even comparing it to that, but the obvious brush strokes, um, I think sometimes isn't really a very good method but for some reason, I, I really took to it for for the Death Corps of Krieg here, and I think it works really well for them. And again, we're getting the collar. Oh, one, one important thing I forgot to paint. 
the tabs on the shoulder. Two shoulders, you want to paint those. Make sure you go back over those with rust gray. Okay, there's your guy. Trench coat all painted and highlighted up. Now we're going to go on to the other details. So the first one is going to be we're going to take a Karak, Karak stone and you're going to dilute that on your wet palette. And re-highlight the leg bandages. Making sure that we leave the Agrax Earth Shade in the cracks and crevices in between each one. And that's done. If your trooper has a backpack, then you're going to just re-highlight the backpack. This one doesn't, but let me show you one of my finished models that does. So you're just following the lines of the backpack, vertical on both sides, and then painting horizontally in the center. Oh, the sleeping roll. I'm sorry, not the backpack. The sleeping roll on top of the backpack. All right. The last thing we're doing with Carrick Stone is we are highlighting the gas mask. So to start, we take some Carrick Stone on the edge of our brush and we are going to very carefully trace the lines on the sides. And using short little strokes, we're going to follow The material. So you end up with something like this. Okay, next, we're going to take Gorthor Brown. <clears throat> it's a color that's not used too often. It kind of reminds me of like milk chocolate. Uh, if you don't want to use this, you can also use Carrack Stone again and just mix it in with some Dryad Bark, which is what we use for the dark brown leather. So we're going to just go back over everything that we painted with dried bark with this highlight of Corthor Brown. So first we're getting all the fingers of all their both hands, the gloves, the dark brown gloves. Then we are going to get any creases in the trousers. So I like to start where the folds are and just do little, tiny little feathered strokes. And then just find the lines of creases elsewhere and just paint soft little, soft little highlights just like that. Nothing too crazy. <clears throat> okay, next we're going to get our lead belcher and we're going to re-highlight The breathing tube first just up the center as well as the readout or the front of the machine of our troopers little oxygen supply 
should look something like that. Let that dry for a second. <clears throat> While that's drying, we're gonna take Runefang Steel, which is the new Mithril Silver. It's the brightest silver in the range. Very, very bright, so we're gonna use just a little bit of it, put it onto our wet palette, and what we're gonna be doing with this is creating some battle damage as well as highlights. So starting from the bayonet, we're just gonna do some diagonal slashes. With the entrenching tool, same thing, just diagonal slashes on the edges here down the handle, second bayonet back here, and repeat with the rifle, the last gun, I mean. So just very, very light touch-ups on the metal to get that Agrax Earthshade shine or that dull dullness off of the very flattest surfaces of your las gun. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some rune fang steel <clears throat> and you are going to edge all of the dark iron. So starting with the armor on the hands just going to paint some very random slashes. Make sure that you just get the edges. Same thing with the shoulder plates. I'm eventually going to be using transfers on these, so I'm not going to get too crazy on the top one but the bottom one you can and then uh, if you want you can touch up the oxygen canister here on the back as well as the two Aquila buttons usually Deathcore have one single right shoulder pad so line that one up too. And last, but quite most importantly for this, the helmet. The helmet I like to do diagonal slashes from the front corner. Drag my brush across the top front rim. And down the side. And finally, edge across the back a little bit. Remember, you want to be just random and use diagonal. <clears throat> diagonal slashes. And the last part, the most important part, is here the kind of the top part of the helmet. You want to highlight the raised area, and then you want to do a series of short slashes from the front to the back on the sides, as if their helmets get banged up a lot. So you end up with something like that. All right, the last thing we're gonna use Rune Fang Steel for, so you want a nice amount on just the tip, is we're going to line the lenses. This is gonna require very Steady, steady hands. So let's see how, how close up we can get without blurring. Keep the camera focused, Igor. All right, master. And there you go. Now, because I want the inside of the glass of the lenses to be black, I'm, um, if I get, if I get any Runefang steel into the center, then I just take some Chaos Black 
and or Abaddon Black and touch up the inside like so. Right, we're almost at the finish line. Next, we're gonna take some pallid witch flesh. Now, this is a thick paint for a layer of paint. So I'm only taking just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. I'm gonna make sure that I spread it out on my wet palette. Dilute it with a half a drop of water. Get it only on the very, very tip of my brush. Because what we're going to do is paint the little readout on the front. See, luckily yeah, I've got this uh, piece of cork here, and um, the piece of cork really helps out. <clears throat> if you manage to get the white all over the place, I'm just going to take some lead belcher and clean up the edges. So we really establish where the white of that of that readout is compared to the rest. And remember, our base color for this was Mornfang Brown. So if you get any silver paint or white paint onto the sides, then a little Mornfang Brown will fix that right up for you. So we've given that a second to dry, we're going to take Mephiston Red. With these, Death Corp Krieg, with most Death Corp Krieg, I found that red is a great complementary, complementary color, especially this bright Mephiston Red. So for the unit identification patch, the little diagonal tab on the left collar, I'm going to paint, it's like a triangle, I'm going to paint it with a fist on red. You'll probably get it on your oxygen tank, or on your um, breather tube. If you do, then just let it dry for a second and then you can go back and hit it with some more lead belcher. While you've got the paint still on your brush, you're going to just make a little sliver in the readout tube to kind of show, you know, those dials and readouts where the red signifies danger or danger. I kind of put a little bit too much red on it, so I'm going to go back over that with some Pallid Witch Flesh right after I go back over the tube this lead belcher there you go so that fixes that problem I think the most important thing to remember when painting is that any mistake can be corrected. Okay, so I let that dry for just a second. I'm going to come back with the Pallid Witch Flesh. And just tighten up the area where the red paint is.
Yeah, like I was saying, you want to be able to correct any mistake you make just by having a little bit of patience and not giving in to being frustrated that you made a mistake in the first place. Especially when you try a new technique or a new model. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes. The trick is to just learn from them and improve on your next one. And so there you have it. That is the Deathcore of Krieg model painted up. Only thing left to do is give him his unit identification number on his left shoulder, which we'll do using the Death Corps of Krieg transfer sheet. Uh, something you can also do if you want is to go back over the gold with Gehenna's gold, but it looks like all of the gold kind of made it through the shading. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is show you how I do the basing. I should have actually started this sooner, but that's okay, I'm giving it a chance to dry. If you have wood on your base, steel legion drab is the way to go. These bases are from Secret Weapon Miniatures, and um, I'll be doing a review of them coming soon. The Trenchworks bases are absolutely fantastic for any kind of model or any kind of army that you build that is themed to be operating in a trench system. So Krieg, uh, Vostroyans possibly, Cadians definitely are an option. Um, mostly Imperial I can I can say because the trench works all look like World War One era kind of system, so uh, it's not. It, there's no. There's nothing alien about them. They're just a bunch of planks of wood thrown together haphazardly to create walkways and and stuff. I might do a review of the Death Corps of Creek transfer sheet too. There's some interesting things on it that I've never seen in a transfer sheet before, like uh, minefield markers and trench sector designators. So real interesting stuff, I've never seen it before. All right, while we let that dry, we're going to go on to paint up the mud. The product I use for mud is AK Interactive's Damp Earth Enamel Color. It's fantastic. It is, uh, I mean, I hate to use that the F word so much, but really it looks like your model just went outside and, and ran around in the mud. It's an enamel color, which means you want to use a brush that you don't mind getting dirty, unless you've got some white spirit around to clean it. <clears throat> I've got some old brushes that I usually use for terrain and uh, for painting bases and whatnot, so it comes out looking like that. I should probably do this on its own separate video, but that's all right. Maybe I'll make a separate video after this for it, just as a review of AK products. The AK products are so good. They're really meant for artillery ve um, vehicles. Scenery, well, not really scenery so much, but a lot of it is like grime streaks, rust streaks, engine oil, stuff that you really can put onto a vehicle and make it look really good. But um, bases work just as well. Taking my damp earth, put it right there. And I'm gonna probably put a little bit more in the front when it dries, but <clears throat> for now, it's fine. 
You might also want to get, if you're using enamel colors, like AK Interactive, then you might want to consider using a second cup of water to uh, clean your brushes with because the enamel color separates <clears throat> and so it ends up like on the top of your water glass and you don't want that mixing in with your with your acrylic paints. You don't want any of your paints mixing together so I mean after a while you always want to change your paint water but definitely if you're using enamel colors it's a little bit a little bit trickier. I'm gonna paint the rim now chaos black. I could paint it in a dark in a brown color and just make it look you know very consistent and muddy but I've decided that I'm going to paint it black because the reasoning for that is that a dark color rimming the edge of your base is going to help draw the eye upwards. I've taken my, my Chaos Black, added a little bit of water to it. I'm just gonna follow the rim. This is my first time also really working with resin bases um, where the detail is molded onto it. And I have to say I'm very happy. If you make a mistake or you paint too high up, Luckily we just added, or we just painted on the base coats to the front and to the um, damp earth, so you can always add a little bit more to adjust it, which I will do right now. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is let this dry, we'll come back and we'll hit it with a shade and um, do some highlighting and that will be it. With the base done, our Death Corps of Kriegsmen will be completely painted. So it took a couple of hours, some wait time to let the shades dry, but it's a simple, easy method of doing a Death Corps of Kriegsmen. Kriegs Guardsmen. So we will um, let this dry, finish up, and show you what it looks like at the end of the video. Hey, once this is dried, very simple next step. You're just gonna give the planks of wood on the base a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Very simple. Shouldn't take us but 30 seconds. Remember, you wanna make sure that the Steel Legion drab is completely dry before you do this. Um, otherwise, it's going to mix with the wash or mix with the shade and end up not looking very good. <clears throat> the shade on its own needs to be nice and dark and Steel Legion Drab is a thick foundation or base coat paint is going to um, ruin that. So you want to make sure that you wait at least about I'll say maybe like half an hour before you get wash on. And you don't have to worry about the damp earth in the back. That's kind of going to take care of itself. Just want to make sure you spread it all out here on the front. Okay, we're going to take another little break and once this is dry, there's only one last thing to do for the wood paneling, and then we'll be done with this model. Right, the very last step you're going to do is paint in, after the planks have dried, paint in some uh, wood grain with Carex stone. This is kind of the same thing that I do for my Vostroyan Lasgun wood grain. So I'm putting it in my wet palette to thin it down with some water and you want to make sure that you wipe off the majority of it so you don't have your brush isn't just laid it down loaded down I'm sorry 
paint. And then what you're going to do is basically just make very thin lines all the way across following the grain of the planks. Hopefully you'll have enough paint on the tip of your brush to get a little bit of detail but not so much that it obscures any of the actual cast of the wood. For those of you who've seen my How to Paint a Skaven Doom Wheel video, I did a bunch of different effects for wood in that video. Rotted wood, um, wood that looked like it was old and decaying, built right next to some, some fresh wood planks. And those use a bunch of different colors, but I decided to be very monochromatic and simple with this wood grain for my Death Corps of Krieg because I want the, the viewer's eye to be drawn to the model rather than the base. Then just do a light dry brush on the sides here and finished. And there's your model, Death Core of Kriegsman. Thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, there's another guy to add to the meat grinder. See you in the next video.